this week, we're going to go into depth into six tried and true methods to improve your surfing no matter where you are on your journey. After my win last week at Nationals, I started to reflect on the things that got me to where I am today and the key aspects that helped to progress my surfing. All of these points I wish someone had told me when I was starting. And so hopefully this will help to point you guys in the right direction and give you a great structure on improving your surfing from here on out. My name is Ben Considine and this is The Sunday Glide. Okay everyone, how's it going? So today's video is gonna be a little bit about some of the other elements that are kind of tried and true um, to help you improve your surfing. So I think a lot of the time and what we find in this channel as well is there's a lot of how-tos, um, which I think are fantastic because they give us the insights and the ins and outs of exactly how to learn certain maneuvers and think about your approach to waves and all of that. But I think uh, if we take a bit more of a broad picture perspective, there are some really good ways that if we apply over time, we can make sure that we are noticing some good improvement in your surfing. I think it's easy not to think about these things as much um, because, you know, they're not spoken about as much. But um, we're going to step through today six really key methods that we can use to improve our surfing, take us from the beginner levels all the way through the advanced levels. All of these uh, apply no matter what stage of surfing you're in. So they're still things that I apply today. Um, so we'll speak about them a little bit from my perspective, how they can help you. But also something I really did want to touch on is, I guess, the, the part this played in taking me from, you know, a beginner surfer when I was a grom, um, all the way through to now, where luckily I have had some really good uh, contest results and stuff like that, and I want to push that further. So some of this and what we'll speak about today will be involved with that too. Uh, we've got the most probably important uh, point at the very end, so that sixth point, so stay tuned for that. Um, and at the end, I'll run through a little template that I've created as well. Um, if for those of you who want to check that out, it's going to be the first link in the description. Um, in my buy me a coffee link, I uh, have put down a little post of a template that you can use to improve your own surfing and uh, go through a really nice uh, template of uh, how to think about these things and to provide a system for your own surfing progression and making sure that you are integrating these into your surfing as well. So the first big important thing that we have to be considering um, and that really does help to progress your surfing no matter what stage of surfing you're in is setting a goal. Um, so I'm not sure if many of you know uh, my background. I'm a physiotherapist um, or physical therapist depending on if you're in the US or Australia or wherever. Um, but one of the big things that we do utilize for patients and something that I utilize for my own surfing as well is setting a goal. Not only that, making sure that it is a smart goal. So that is a specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely goal. You wanna make sure that you're actually having all of these components to the goal. Now, the reason for that is if we set a goal in mind and we just set one goal, uh, especially, which is something we'll touch on in a second, we don't actually have a lot of uh, substance or context for that goal. How are we gonna get there? When are we gonna get there by? So that's why it is uh, really important that in our goal setting, we're nice and smart about it. Little pun. Um, so if we go about this, and I'll take you through a little run through, or maybe an example of what I do, is for our goal, you want to have an overall goal. So this is gonna be your long-term goal that you wanna be setting. And then you've gotta have more uh, kind of some subsidiary goals or some short-term goals that will actually lead you into this overarching long-term goal. So say my, one of my goals at the moment is to make sure I qualify for the World Longboarding Tour. Great. Would I leave it there? No, I'd probably need to make sure that we're adding a few more elements to that. So to make sure it's specific and we want to make sure that we can measure that. So the measuring would be that obviously I have qualified through the qualifying series uh, to get onto the tour. 
Now, in terms of it being achievable, I need to make sure that I'm working on my own surfing. There needs to be something in that goal that uh, I guess pertains to how I'm going to be working towards that. So what am I going to be doing? Um, and then I need to have a time frame in there as well. So a better goal, um, and I would write this down, I'm all for making sure that we write things down. Don't just keep it in your head because you might forget about it, um, but making sure, so it might be, all right, by 2024, I want to have qualified for the World Longboard Tour by placing in the top two on the uh, Australasian qualifying series. And I'm going to do this by achieving X, Y, and Z. So it might be, uh, better turns, better in terms of my competitive strategy to some degree. So it's a really good way to set that overarching goal. Now, as we spoke about though, we need those little goals to help us get there. So this is where we're gonna get a little bit more uh, in depth about the specific things that we need to learn to do. I like to set a minimum of three, maybe five goals that lead into that big overarching goal. For you, maybe it might be the fact that one day you wanna hang 10, okay, so you've got that goal of hanging 10. So by 2023, I want to be able to hang 10, uh, walk to the nose, hang 10 and walk back with good control. Okay, so it's nice and specific, it's measurable, realistic, because you're giving yourself a nice amount of time to do it. We've got a nice uh, framework in the context there. Now, in terms of the, the subsidiary goals, things that you might want to work on for that goal of hanging 10 might be making sure that you can cross step forwards really, really comfortably. It might be you, you need to make sure that you can cross step back from the nose uh, in a nice, effective uh, and balanced way. It might be your positioning on the wave. So how do you set up the board? Okay, so that'd be three goals. I do like to bring this back to sort of like if you're playing a piano piece, you're not gonna learn to play a piano piece all in one go. You need to break it into the first five notes and then you learn that over and over and over again. And then you learn the second five notes and you learn that over and over again. And then you can bring those two together and it all comes together. So we would be working on you cross-stepping forwards, making sure that feels really good. Then you're cross-stepping back, that feels really good. And then before you know it, you can cross-step back and to and from the nose really, really nicely. And then this is where we'd add the nose right on top of that and everything else. The more specific it is, the more achievable it is because you've got a really clear uh, understanding in your mind of how you're gonna get there. Now, this uh, template of the goal setting will be linked in the description below. So make sure you check that out um, as well as some other stuff as well. second thing that we need to be considering is making sure that you're actually surfing in or, or with and amongst people who are better than you. So there's kind of a well-known thing, especially uh, that I see in the, the shortboard community, where a lot of the good shortboarders come from a similar area. So in Australia, we have here down in Torquay, have uh, Snapper Rocks uh, in Coolangatta. There's lots of different areas where some really good uh, shortboard talent comes from. In longboarding, you might say that's Noosa, you might say that's Malibu, all of these areas which have waves that are quite conducive to those, uh, those types of surfing. Um, but it's no matter that all of these uh, good surfers come from these areas because they've all got each other to feed off. Sometimes we might think, okay, if I wanna you know, achieve this, then I need to do it alone and I need to work on it by myself. But if you have other people to uh, have a good understanding of how they're surfing, if they're better than you, um, then you can try to mirror what they do. So maybe it's as simple as where do you sit out on the lineup? If you're finding you're going out surfing and you can't quite get the waves, you're not in the right position, Go and mirror or uh, sit near someone. Don't paddle inside someone because they might get a bit angry. Um, but try and make sure that you're paddling uh, near where they are, sitting near where they are. Um, if you've got some friends who are great at surfing, uh, make sure you go out with them because you can learn a lot just by doing what they're doing. And sometimes the things that they're doing that are working might be a little bit counterintuitive. So it might not be something that you would have gone to naturally, but it can be a really, really good effective way uh, to make sure that you're pushing yourself outside your comfort zone a little bit, doing something that you wouldn't necessarily do otherwise. Um, and it might very well be the things that you need to do to progress. It can be a really good way for them to um, get the ball rolling um, and notice that good quick progress as well. So um, a good way to do this, if you don't have you know, heaps of surfer friends, join a surfing club. That can be a great way to get amongst a, a lot of uh, people who have been surfing for a while, a really fun, vibrant community of surfers as well. Get more connections, uh, more friends, and also you'll uh, progress your surfing with that nicely as well. So I heavily recommend you do find some people to kind of follow and shadow out in the water, um, to sit where they're sitting, to approach the wave they're approaching it as well. 
And a great thing here is you can actually get good feedback from the friends so or from the people that you are surfing with. So potentially um, they might think that maybe your positioning in the wave should be uh, a little bit different. They might think that uh, in order to cross step, you need to go about it this way. You need to be closer to the pocket, um, X, Y, Z. So that could be great feedback. Now, from experience, I do know that as surfers, uh, it's almost a bit counterintuitive to explain exactly how we go our approach to the wave. Um, uh, this comes from, you know, I think I'm on 10 years of coaching surfers now, um, and there's definitely a, a skill in being able to communicate and uh, have an understanding of how we do what we do and communicate that clearly. But it's good to get the feedback from your friends. And then if you do need a coach, um, I'm always happy if you kind of flick through an email or something, if you want to get uh, some uh, little tips off me, I'm happy with that. So yeah, feel free to get in touch, um, but it's good to get an idea or some understanding, some different uh, perspectives on how you can approach your waves as well. Now, this one seems fairly obvious as well, but it is around surfing frequency. So I said before uh, in my goal setting that I needed to make sure that I was surfing fairly often. And again, it's uh, easy to think about, but sometimes when we don't prioritize our surfing, when we don't schedule it in, surfing falls out of the priority list. And firstly, that's less fun because we're not surfing as often, um, but also it's gonna not be as great for our surfing progression. We do know that frequency, like with any learned behavior, learned task is gonna be really, really important. So if you're getting out multiple times a week and refining and refining and refining what you're doing, it's gonna be much better than if you've had three weeks off surfing. Um, it's gonna be a lot harder to see that progress um, and to notice those small changes over time. So surfing frequency is a really, really big thing to take into consideration. I understand it's hard with jobs, it's hard with full-time work and everything like that. Um, but this is where you can prioritize it. And you can say, okay, Wednesday, Friday mornings are gonna be my mornings where I go out and surf. Okay, give that sign to yourself, have a great time out there in the water. And as a you know fun little adjunct with that is you'll notice that surfing progression uh, will improve as well. So make sure that you are getting out a few times a week. If you can understand, can't always do that. There's a, you know, life gets in the way. Um, but if you're serious about your progression with your surfing, um, you know, it's just one of the things that uh, is extremely, extremely beneficial and important uh, to prioritize uh, for the progressions there. All right, and putting on my physio hat here a little bit, um, but one of the other big things that's uh, absolutely key to making sure that your progression is as effective as possible is not getting injured. So there's a whole host of things that come into this, but essentially as surfers, we are prone to different risk factors in terms of injury, depending on the surfing that you're doing. Um, so the biggest thing that I could probably advocate for is you do have some kind of mobility and strengthening work for yourself. Um, of course, if we're trying to achieve a certain goal, the number one thing that is going to stop us or hinder us towards that goal is time out of the water. And a significant amount of time out of the water is uh, typically due to some sort of significant injury. So make sure that, uh, again, if you can, try to reduce that risk of injury as much as possible. Tip number five here is going to be when you're actually going out for a surf, making sure you do have those surfs and pretty frequently you have these uh, where you're going to work on something. More often than not, one of the hardest things is having an idea of the things that you wanna work on. Uh, you go out into the water, but unfortunately we don't actually really work on that in the water. Um, and this is because, you know, the waves weren't necessarily conducive to the things we wanted to work on. We just forgot about it. Our mates were out there, all of these different things. Um, you know, I even find it for myself sometimes now if I'm going out to work on something and then I come back in and think I just didn't even focus on it. So um, it's funny how it all works. One thing that I've found really works quite well to break that cycle, to make sure you are working on what you need to when you want to go out there and to, you know, kind of have that goal set and uh, make sure that you are um, doing that in the water is to ensure that on your first wave, you actually do the thing that you want to do. Um, I find that this is a great way to start the session because we've started on a positive. I find if we do the latter and we don't start with a wave where we practice what we wanna be working on, um, then we just think, oh, we'll get the next one, we'll get the next one, we'll get the next one. And uh, each wave is kind of just we're surfing to our normal habits and routine again, rather than focusing on what we should be. Get the first wave and make sure you're um, really uh, very specific about focusing on that. And then I also feel like you're more attuned to looking for the sections and the waves um, and the opportunities that will allow you to work on what you need to be working on as well. So I think it's a really good, almost like a reset um, that can allow you to make sure you are focusing on 
what you need to in the session. So next session, if you want to work on something, make sure on that first wave you do get that, that in. Um, and that's been something I've noticed that's been really useful to break that uh, cycle of just going out in the water and kind of just surfing like you normally would without getting the practice that you wanted to in. So give that a go. And the last part here, and I said this was probably the most important for your surfing progression because it's the thing that I think is the hardest to do, um, but it's pushing yourself outside that comfort zone, outside of your zone of confidence. You know, we all have an area where we're really confident surfing in, whether it is popping up in the white water and going straight or, you know, cross-stepping to the nose, nose riding, but not hanging 10. There's so many, uh, there's so many different reasons why we don't feel confident uh, to step to that next level and really push the boundaries. And a lot of it is, uh, of course we want to have a good successful fun session and then it also might be a little bit scary to, to push ourselves to the next level maybe that's wave height maybe that's uh, a new trick uh, manoeuvre that we're not confident with and we don't want to fall which is fair enough um, but I think for those people who are confident to push themselves to that next level to push the boundaries a little bit they're the people who I see making the biggest progress so it is a good thing to focus on for yourself and really take into consideration now obviously if you're accustomed to surfing two foot waves I definitely wouldn't say push the boundaries and go surf 10 foot waves and the same goes for if you're just learning to cross step I wouldn't say go for your hang heels or your hang tens straight away there's definitely a better way or path forwards than jumping too far ahead the best progress we can make is something that's realistic it's achievable so we're going to be able to do it but it's just outside our zone of competence so we've got the foundations to be able to do it but it's going to push the boundaries a little bit and again if we're doing something um, way too high level then we might not have the baseline foundations we need to achieve that and it might take a little bit uh, you know too long to get there and we'll um, end up giving up or something like that if you do this frequently if we get our frequent surfs in if we have those goals set then this is where we can notice over the long time uh, we will We'll get better bit by bit and we can see over a long period of time we'll actually have some really nice improvements. Something I have done today um, and I think this is a, a cool little exciting thing and I might do more of this in the future. Um, in my buy me a coffee link uh, in the description below which will be the first link there um, there's actually going to be a post that I put up uh, that provides a really nice framework of how you can apply this to your own surfing. Um, it's free, it's definitely worth a look. Um, I put a little bit of time into this and I think it could really help just to give you a practical sort of way through thinking about these things and I always find if you've got something and you've written it down it's much more likely to happen um, we've got that objectively there in front of us and it's not so wishy-washy um, if that makes sense so if we have this on our computers print it out um, put it in your car when you go out for a surf think of what you're going to work on what your goals are um, you know when you're planning to surf this week and xyz i think it could be a really good help so definitely go check that out as well that's also an area or a space where you can if you like the videos you can support um, i really appreciate the people who are supporting it means a lot um, definitely helps a long way with uh, everything i'm doing here um, so yeah thank you so much um, but yeah go get that uh, little framework and template for free and uh, see if you can apply that to your own surfing. I'd love to hear how it's going. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope it was useful. I think that this stuff is really, really good to think about. And it's some stuff that I actually think is the most important stuff to focus on. You know, you do wanna be tackling these new maneuvers and everything like that, but these foundations are the big things that, again, as I said in the, the title of the video, I wish someone just had laid this out for me when I was a beginner because they're undoubtedly true. If you're surfing people with people that are better uh, than you, then you're going to have your level uh, stepped up. If you're surfing more frequently, um, if you're setting goals, these are the big things that lead to progress and they're not quite as, uh, you know, you can do this one day and then see that progress the next day. They take time, um, but these behaviors, patterns, and these, uh, I guess, perspectives around uh, improvement are really important and a big part play a big part in my surfing as well so i really want that to be able to i guess translate into your surfing as well um, so again use the framework give it a go um, we'll leave it there for today um, again thanks everyone for the support i really really appreciate it um, we'll have another episode of the sunday glide coming up in a week's time we've got tip time coming up on wednesday but until then hope you guys are getting waves and we'll catch you on the next one